Meet the tardigrade. Tardigrades are microscopic organisms, usually less than a millimeter in length, with about 900 described species. Some can live in freshwater or marine habitats, but most are terrestrial forms living on mosses or lichens. Tardigrades have eight short, unjointed legs, each with claws. They waddle across their environment by clinging to the substrate, moss or water plants. They also have a pair of sharp stylets and sucking pharynx, which are used to pierce and suck plant cells or small prey, such as nematodes or rotifers. Their nervous system is surprisingly complex, although they lack circulatory or respiratory systems. They may reproduce sexually or by parthenogenesis, but tardigrades also have a very unique ability. Cryptobiosis! Cryptobiosis is a suspended state of animation, during which metabolism is virtually undetectable. During cryptobiosis, tardigrades can decrease their water content from 85% to 3%. At this point, they aren't able to move and their bodies become barrel-shaped. In this state, they can survive the most extreme conditions for up to a decade. Once water becomes available, they actively resume their normal activities, no problem. The purpose of this experiment was to determine the effects of microgravity and radiation on survival and reproduction of both active and desiccated tardigrades in the species Macrobiotis rictorsi. The experiment included tardigrades that were present in four different environments. Group 1, naturally dehydrated, in which tardigrades were collected from dry leaf litter in the field. Group 2, experimentally dehydrated, in which tardigrades were desiccated under controlled conditions in lab. Group 3, hydrated and fed, in which tardigrades were collected from moist leaf litter and provided with nematodes as a food source to mimic their natural environment. Group 4, hydrated and starved, in which tardigrades were collected from moist leaf litter with no food source available. And finally, the control group called TC4, in which tardigrades were kept on Earth for comparison. The tardigrades were flown to space and remained there for 12 days. The results upon the tardigrades return showed that the highest survival rate was in group 1, the tardigrades desiccated in leaf litter. There was no statistical differences in the survival rate of group 1 and the control group TC4 on Earth. Also, the offspring of the tardigrades that reproduced showed no differences to those produced in the control group, and the offspring of group 4 also reproduced successfully. The group with the lowest survival rate was group 3, the hydrated and fed tardigrades, thought to be the cause of the decay of organic material resulting in oxygen deprivation. There were no visible damages to the genomic DNA of the tardigrades. Basically, the tardigrades' ability to survive in space means that there is potential for life on other planets, as stated by the panspermia hypothesis. So imagine for a moment a meteorite slamming into our planet. And this meteorite is so large that it actually ejects pieces of the Earth into outer space. Now imagine on those pieces of Earth that got ejected into outer space, there are tardigrades. If that little organism could survive the vacuum of space long enough to then fall down onto another planet, it could seed that planet with life. If life can be transmitted in that way, then it becomes much more likely that life is a very, very common thing in our universe. This experiment demonstrated the tardigrades' ability to adapt in extraterrestrial environments and withstand microgravity and cosmic radiation, helping us further determine the origin of life. <laughs>